Hello, my name is Oren Martin, and I have the privilege of serving as the Assistant Professor of Christian Theology at Boyce College, as well as overseeing the seminary track, which is our five-year uh, BA MDiv program at, here at Boyce College. Like I said, I have the privilege of teaching Christian theology, and it is a joyful, delightful, life-giving task that I've been given. And uh, let me just talk to you just for a few minutes about what theology is and what I have the privilege of doing. You, you, you may ask, what is theology? And, and here is my best kind of take at it. Theology is that joyful activity in which faith seeks understanding in response to God's gracious revelation and salvation that He's accomplished for us in Christ by His Spirit so that we can know Him, so that we can live before Him, so that we can think rightly about Him, so that we can orient our lives toward Him, and so that we can make Him known to others. I think Exodus 3 gives us a great illustration of what theology is. You may remember the context of when God uh, was working in the lives of His people and He was accomplishing His purposes to make a people for Himself. In order to do so, He had to call His people out from under the hands of the Egyptians. And so we find ourselves in Exodus chapter 3, after Moses had been called, uh, as he was being prepared for the ministry that God was going to call him to. And so in Exodus chapter 3, it says, Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside, God called to him out of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said to him, here I am. And then God said to him, do not come near, take off the sandals of your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. In that moment when Moses was standing before that holy burning bush, as he was leading his sheep and heading to Horeb, Moses in that moment had two choices. Either he could cautiously tiptoe around that speaking bush, think about that for a moment, a burning yet not burning up speaking bush, or he could respond to, he could speak back to, that speaking, holy bush, right? As it called out to him, Moses, Moses. Now, now put yourself in his shoes. Well, what do you say? Now, you might say, we don't have a burning bush to speak to us. Right? We, we don't have God uh, taking up a burning bush to speak to us. Right? But I would argue that we have something better than a speaking bush. Hebrews 1 says that long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets in many portions and in many ways, at many times and in many ways. But in these last days, God has spoken to us in his son. Now, this is an amazing reality because God's word spoken to us in Christ through the scriptures is our burning bush. It's, it's the scriptures that testify to what God has done for us in Christ, where we meet God. And just like Moses in that moment had to take off the sandals of his feet because it was holy ground, when we encounter God, where he has spoken in the scriptures about Christ, we too are standing on holy ground. This is the privilege that I have of teaching theology. I get to teach what God has spoken to us what God has said to us regarding what he has done for us in Christ, what he's given us in Christ by his spirit. A couple of other comments about engaging in theology as you are considering coming to Boyce College and studying these things. First, theology is not only holy, but it's also joyful. It's delightful. Why? Well, because fellowship with God is life. The one, John 5 tells us, the one who has life in himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit gives from himself life. Through what? Through the resurrection and the life of Jesus Christ. 
Now we understand that sin separates us. Sin cuts us off from that life. Sin robs us of that life. But Jesus came that we might have life and we might have it abundantly. Jesus says in John 17, 3, that this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. Theology is life-giving because it concerns nothing less than knowing this life-giving God. Secondly, theology is worshipful. To, to know God is to worship him for who he is and what he has done for us in Christ and given us by his Holy Spirit. I mean, think about the, the scenes in Revelation 4 and 5, scenes of worship where they're, they're crying out to God, worthy are you, for you created and by your will all things existed, and worthy are you, a lamb who was slain, who by your death purchased and ransomed people from God for every tongue and tribe and people and nation. You've made it the kingdom of priests. They're singing and that singing is filled with the content of knowing God and responding to what God had done for them in Christ. Friends, if theology doesn't lead you and me to worship, then we're doing it wrong. I love this, this uh, quote by Martin Luther. He said, don't trust a theologian who doesn't sing. Why? Because we understand as God has acted for us and given us what we most need, saving from our sins and the gift of eternal life and the gift of knowing him for eternity, we understand we can't help but sing. Now that singing may take on different forms, but nonetheless, our hearts are set ablaze in response to and because of what God has done for us in Christ. The same reason that the, that the Israelites sang in Exodus 15 after God had delivered them is the same reason, yet in a greater way because God has delivered us in Christ. That's the reason we sing. You remember that song in Exodus 15 where Moses and the people sing uh, and praise not just the God, but my God. He's my God. He's my strength. He's my song. He's my Father's God. J.C. Ryle quotes Martin Luther as having said, the life of Christianity consists in the possessive pronouns. It's one thing to say Christ is a savior. It's quite another to say he is my savior and he is my Lord. Can you say that he is your savior and that he is your Lord? Theology sets us to singing because of what God has done for us. And because of what he's done for us, we can come to him as our Father and our Lord through the Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, if you want to learn more about voice, if you want to come and study with us, we would love to have you. We would love to, to be able to, to help you think through and help you become more proficient in knowing God and becoming more competent in the scriptures and how those scriptures apply to business or teaching or communication or philosophy or politics and all these things and even more. We want to teach you what it means to think about God and respond to him so that you can be prepared for a life of ministry. So, so come to Voice College. We would love to see you here.